It has long been known that human cancers often show an abnormal chromosome number, and this aneuploidy is thought to be an important aspect of the genome instability in human cancer. Human cancers often show karyotypes in which some of the chromosomes are present at four copies, suggesting that an early step towards the formation of an aneuploid cell is a tetraploid cell with double the chromosome number that then loses chromosomes during tumor genesis. Today's Adavoli in the lab now has discovered a pathway that can explain how tetraploidization might occur. Her work shows that tetraploidization can be the consequence of telomere damage, which can occur as a consequence of telomere shortening during tumor genesis. Telomere shortening occurs during the early stages of human tumor genesis before telomerase is activated. When this shortening curves the protective function of telomeres, cells perceive their chromosome ends as sites of DNA damage and activate the ATM and ATR DNA damage checkpoints. So, most likely, many human tumors progress through a period where they experience their telomeres as sites of DNA damage and have active DNA damage signaling. And Therese's findings now suggest that a side effect of this telomere damage is the formation of tetraploid cells. I model telomere dysfunction in mouse cells by deleting the genes of the telomeric POT1 proteins, which results in persistent DNA damage signaling at chromosome ends. When POT1 is absent from mouse cells that also lack the tumor suppressor P53, the cells enter endoduplication cycles. The cells first linger in G2 and don't enter into mitosis and I show that they cannot enter mitosis because CDK1 cyclin B is repressed by the DNA damage signaling coming from the dysfunctional telomeres. Although cells spend a long time in G2, they eventually start re-replicating their DNA. And this puzzled me because normally in G2, DNA replication is prevented by geminin, an inhibitor of CDT1, the protein that is normally required to license replication origins. So in order to understand what's happening with geminin and CDT1, I film cells containing fluorescent tag CDT1 and geminin using the Fucci system. Normally, cells express the red fluorescent CDT1 in G1 and become yellow when they enter DNA replication because the green geminin is expressed as well. Geminin stays in G2 and then is degraded as the cells go through mitosis. This resets the system so that CDT1, which now comes back in G1, can license replication origins. The cells with telomere dysfunction made a mistake in this order of events. They start in G1 with the red CDT1, enter rest phase, and then make the green geminin. But after sitting in G2 for a long time, they manage to degrade geminin without going through mitosis. This now resets the system and the cells accumulate CDT1, which then allows a second rest phase to occur even though the cells never went through mitosis. When I restore telomere function in those cells, they were able to divide normally, growing up as tetraploid clones. Teresa's results suggest what might be happening in the early stages of tumor genesis. Initially, a cell starts proliferating inappropriately, perhaps due to a lesion in the signaling pathway, and its telomeres shorten. Eventually, the shortened telomeres will no longer repress the DNA damage response at chromosome ends. And if these cells have a functional P53 pathway, they will likely undergo apoptosis or senescence blocking tumor formation. However, if the clone is p53 deficient, endoreduplication can occur. Now, the resulting tetraploid clone is, of course, still doomed unless it manages to restore telomere function. If telomerase is upregulated or telomere function is restored in some other way, a tetraploid clone will arise. The resulting clone really has a trifecta of genome instability. It's tetraploid, which will buffer against the loss of essential genes, but at the same time allow higher rates of chromosome loss. The clone has experienced telomere dysfunction, which cre creates dicentric chromosomes that are unstable, and the clone lacks p53, thereby allowing survival in the face of this genome instability. It is really the perfect storm of telomere dysfunction.